Welcome to another episode of PES History. Today we are playing PES 16 in 2024. This game came out in 2015. It was the first ever PES game that I actually bought. In terms of reviews, this game got a 9.5 out of 10 from IGN, 4 out of 5 from Trusted Reviews, 87% from Metacritic. IGN also said that this could well be the best ever football game. Obviously, that is a very, very big statement. Let's see how possibly the best ever football game holds up in 2024. If you want to use the best players and dominate foot, you're going to need a lot of coins. Check out today's sponsor MuleFactory.com who offer foot coins with Comfort Trade. Use my link in the description and my code VAPEXFC5 for 5% off. So here is the main menu for PES 16. If you played PES 16 at the time, does it bring back any memories for you? Pretty much you have your quick tiles here. We've got the Copa Sudamericana, Exhibition Match, Master League, My Club, and the AFC Champions League. If we go to the Match tab, you get some more options here like Exhibition Match, Quick Match, Online Competition. Online doesn't work, obviously. The servers have been shut. Competition here has your Champions League license, Europa League license, the Copa Sudamericana, and also the Copa Libertadores. We've also got the AFC Champions League, and also Euro 2016. So we've got the DLC here as well. Football Life has your My Club, which doesn't work anymore, your Master League, and also Become a Legend, which is like player career mode. And then we've also got the Extras, which is the training and some edit stuff. Because PES games had very limited licensing, Konami did have an edit mode where you could jump in, change the league badges, change the kits, change the club names, and you could make it look pretty legit if you installed an option file. So there wasn't many licensed clubs. Man United was one, but yeah, not many. So let's say you go to Merseyside Blue, you can change the team name, the emblem, the strip, the manager, the squad number, all that kind of stuff. You would just put a USB in and you could upload um, logos and kits and all that to the game. Let's take a look at training now. We've got skills training and also free training. In this training, you could do the attack, the defense, and you could also do free training, free kicks, penalty kicks, left corner kick, right corner kick. And, uh, you know, at the time, compared to FIFA 16's practice arena, Konami did have the better features. So this one, you could do your practice matches. You could do all that kind of stuff. But in FIFA 16, you couldn't. I'm not sure about FIFA 16 on Xbox 360, but I definitely know on the PS4, you couldn't do any of this stuff. The next thing I want to take a look at is Euro 2016. Konami has obviously lost the Euro license, so the Euro 2024 DLC will be coming to FC 24 this year. It was a pretty basic DLC, but it did feature all the proper licensing and branding. You did have all the national teams that qualified. The only thing you could do, I believe, was tournament mode. It didn't feature any, like, qualifying modes or player career modes. Here's the actual menus for it. As you can see, not much to do besides tournament mode. Some national teams did feature the proper license kits, but other teams didn't. As you can see, the Russian team does not have their license kits, so of course that ruins the experience a little bit and in terms of stadiums as you can see we're playing in a generic ground if you don't have the proper stadiums it ruins the dlc it did the job i guess but yeah looking back at it now it was pretty basic it was just tournament mode that was it you know there was nothing to it one thing pes 16 does well is that you could actually play the europa league in tournament mode you can't even do this in ea's game so at least konami had that in their game ea pay attention now let's take a look at become a legend this is like the player career mode you can create an original player or use an existing player this hairstyle is absolutely crazy imagine rocking up to school with this trim. They would probably send you home the moment you get there. I love how we just put a headband on for the sake of putting a headband on. You can even put a design on the sides and I think around the back as well. Yeah, it was pretty good customization, very in-depth stuff here. They did have some licensed boots in the game. You can see Tiempos, Hyper Venoms, and also Adidas, Mizuno boots as well. So there we go, some basic stats. 17 years old to start with. I don't think you can adjust the age. You have to select your league. Let's say we do the English league. And you can't actually pick a club to start at. The game actually generates one based on the league you chose. They've sent me to Norfolk City. We're running around in the ground and there's no one there to watch us. Imagine being a player that signs for a club and no one even cares. Look at this. You're shooting promo material for YouTube, Twitter and Facebook in an empty stadium. No one even cares. Here is the menu for Become a Legend. So we've got the manager trust level, the condition in the middle there. We've got the league table, the goal rankings and some news. Calendar at the bottom. Player menu here so you can check your data, which just tells you your contract and your salary. So there's focus points that you earn as you play the mode and you can allocate that to different parts of your uh, stats like shooting, dribbling, defense, and then there's skill acquisition, so you can acquire skills as well. You can do position training, so I guess it's all right. It does the job. Club records also keeps track of your appearances, goals, and assists for each club that you play at. There's also my team info where you can check the game plan, the player results, and competition stuff, and that's basically become a legend. Next up, let's take a look at Master League, which is like your manager career mode. You get a nice introduction as well. They make it out like you're about to watch some sort of football documentary on Netflix or something. Now, PES 16, when compared to FIFA 16, had a better manager customization. In PES 16, you could actually customize the look of your guy. You could alter the appearance, the face, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the hair, everything you would have dreamed of 
in a FIFA game. And it took EA a long time to actually implement this sort of feature in their game. I remember so many people wanted manager customization in FIFA 16 and older FIFA games. Choose the club where you will start your career. Your contract is renewed on a yearly basis. You joined Manchester United as their manager. I love it. Empty stadium. No one even cares. For some reason, we're juggling a ball. Why? Why are we juggling a ball? We almost ripped our pants. Look at this. We're going to rip our pants, man. What are you doing, bro? I like that, actually. I do like it, though. It's something cool. We didn't even get this in EA games. And there you go. There's your main menu. So we've got the new stuff. Pretty similar to Become a Legend. You've got your team spirit there, which was a big thing in Master League. We've got the team management section there. Then we've also got negotiations where you do your transfer stuff. Then we've also got my team info, database and also system settings. In terms of training your players, this is basically how it worked. You can set the daily training policy here. Pretty basic stuff here. You just sort of flick through, do what you want there for each individual player. I don't think there was any drills you had to do or anything like that. We also had a youth team. These are players in the youth team. You can offer players a contract at any time. One thing I liked in PES games was the UEFA for Best Player in Europe award ceremony. You could actually watch a cutscene of this award in the game. I don't think EA does this with their game. I don't think it's in FC24. I'm pretty sure the award still exists in real life, so I'm not sure why we don't have it in career mode. So PES 16 had the Champions League license, and we had the official broadcast packaging. We even had the Old Trafford Tunnel as well. I remember back then, everyone wanted the Champions League license in a FIFA game. We always had to play in that Champions Cup, which wasn't the same. So because it is a Euro year, I thought today's exhibition match will be Euro 2016 France versus Romania. We're just going to play a quick match here just to get a little bit of a feel of the gameplay. Obviously, the graphics now, they're not the best. You know, they're showing their age. Some player faces still look okay, some don't. But it is what it is now. This game was made almost 10 years ago. Here's Suzuko. Let's have a hit from distance. Suzuko, what a shot. Here we go. Here's Pogba. Oh, look at that touch. Beats two players there. So let me know if you played PES 16. Let me know if you have any memories of this game. Feels pretty responsive. Some first touches can be a little bit dodgy or slow, I guess. But it's not too bad. I don't know if this is the best ever football game made, like IGN claims. I remember playing a bit of this game, but I don't remember too much of it. You know, it's been a long time since I was uploading PES 16 videos on the channel. Let's lay it off here. Here's Suzuko. Has a hit from distance. Oh, I love the long shots in this game. Suzuko. Battling for the ball in the midfield. Gets it again. And now there's a chance here for Martial. Plays it across and Giroud with the tap in. There we go. There's only a few minutes left. Obviously, one game doesn't give you the full picture on how this game actually plays. But feels pretty quick. Feels pretty responsive. Not a bad game. Sometimes the first touches are dodgy on some players. That's a nice ball. How did we miss that? Wow. Obviously, the graphics, you know, they're starting to look their age, especially the crowd, some player faces and hair quality and all that. But on the field, it just plays like a standard football game. Nothing to really fault here. 